Today on the show, we want to do our own hip life review, especially off the back of the documentary as well, um, a valuable part of the hip life story. And there may be uh, certain concerns or certain parts of the story that uh, probably have been missed out. So we want to retell the story and understand it also um, from the eyes and the ears of uh, other gatekeepers, if I can say that, and other stakeholders as well. Now, let me just say this and state that um, all these stories may not necessarily be... Um, may speak to parts of uh, where these stakeholders played a role in there, so might not necessarily capture the entire scope of hip life. But we want to talk about it a bit more because it's very important that we have proper documentary of what the story and the journey of hip life has been. And is it dead or alive? A big question that is on the lips of many of us as we ask ourselves. And um, what could have been, the if it, if it is alive, where is it? If it is dead, what happened to it? Um, and what could have been the prospects of hip life? How could we have owned hip life? Where could we have taken it to? Has it evolved to what it is today um, as we're experiencing various genres like Afro beats and I'm a pianos and all? Um, do we find elements of hip life in there? As hip life in itself, we say was best from high life and hip hop um, music. Maybe Maybe I may be wrong, I may be right, who knows, but this morning we are honored to uh, have Ochami Kofi and Hammer of the Last Two, um, aka Dodo Se, who will be joining us on the show later on to have a conversation about this. But before we get into that conversation with them, in-house, let me just do a quick sweep through um, with my friends and let's let's uh, do a quick review on the documentary. I'm very sure we've all seen it. If you haven't seen it as well out there, um, you can also take a few 27 minutes of your life on this special day like Valentine's Day to go watch it after the show ends as well. But it featured um, Abraham Ohenej Jan. Um, uh, it featured Manifest, it featured Kitty, Kwame Eugene, Eno Baroni, uh, Panji Anoff. Uh, yes, and they were all in there, all shared insight into what they saw as the birth and the sustainability or sustenance or continuity, if I can say that, of hip life and the stories of as they know it. But let me just start off with our, us in here. Uh, Olele, let me just start off with you as well. Um, I don't know how old you are. I think about 58, so you are current five. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Just That's kidding right. on that. But what do you make of the documentary that was uh, shared and aired by BBC? And um, what do you make of what you know about the origin, birth, and what it is of hip life? First of all, um, I'm happy and excited to have two of the uh, biggest names mm -hmm. when it comes to the hip life history. Um, featured in mm -hmm. the documentary um, because for well, those I left of, Reggie Rockstone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how could I have left? Yeah, for those of us who have been having the conversations behind the yeah. scenes, uh, there's always this um, unrest, sort of unrest, and this argument, this debate of who started Hip Live, who owns Hip Live, between um, the legendary um, Jedu um, uh, Jedu Bleambole, and then of course Reggie Rockstone. So it was it was very interesting to hear both of them actually say when I'm gonna buy you know and I I I I I was also happy to see Panji mm -hmm. um Panji in there as well and uh I was excited to hear the fact that you know uh when he took talking drums to mm -hmm. the uh, yeah, uh, talking, uh, drums, uh, yeah. Yeah, talking drums to at Latin yeah. records and stuff like so th I mean I I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. know that it was an mm -hmm. opportunity for me to learn and everything. But I was just a bit surprised about the fact that certain names were not featured in there, like the mm -hmm. Lokanians, the Obrafos, mm -hmm. the even the Sarkodiers uh, and stuff like that. I felt like the jump was a mm -hmm. bit from um chronically Reggie Raxton's mm -hmm. era to the Kitty era. Um I felt like someone you know, between the um, even the Assem, the Assem, um, Assem, Assem Sarkodie era should have should have featured. Mm -hmm. You know, um, props to um, Abraham Ohinijan because he had the opportunity to to experience both sides of both generations. But I felt like that place was a bit, you know, it was it was lacking a bit if in terms of the storyline or the storytelling. That's why I would want to believe people have their reservations on how the story mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. been told. I wasn't too sure about the whole Miss Bell statistics. Um, Miss Bell coming to the scene 2000, or, you know, finding her break 2007. I wasn't too sure about that. About that time. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was a bit of... Uh, I wonder if Miss Bell was not available for a conversation. Uh -huh. So the question, the question I want to ask myself, and I was hoping Ricky would get the producer of that particular mm -hmm. documentary, was because mm -hmm. how many people did they reach out to? Because sometimes 
Um, just like the Netflix documentary we talked about once upon a time, the Nigerian one, mm -hmm. um, the impression we got was, oh, it was skewed to just fit the Nigerian narrative. But apparently the producer, mm -hmm. um, Ayo, said that uh, they reached out to some Ghanaian, uh, Ghanaian musicians and mm -hmm. they built out. They, yeah. they didn't really grant yeah. the interview. Yeah. So that's why I'm a bit careful on... On, a, on this, how on this to part. understand why certain persons, persons are were not, not available. Yet. Yes, because um, yeah. the different angles make the conversation sweet and everything. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm um, happy to see Reggie in there. Um, just for starters, this is a, these are my opening remarks. I'm sure when we get into the conversation mm -hmm. proper, I'll ask my questions because I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions too. Yeah. <laughs> and Miss G, we spent the past 27 minutes you know, together watching <laughs> as well. What's your take on this as to what you know already? Um, just like... Um, well, Lily said, I am happy to see Panji in there. Mm. Um, I, I wish that Hama was in there as well um, because there's always a different narrative from these two. Uh, when if you follow the conversation from back in the day, you always hear that uh, Zap also has a different narrative yeah. as to who founded hip life in Ghana. So there's a school of thought that gives it to Reggie. There's another one that believes that is a is a clique or a group of people that came together. So I would have been, you know, more satisfied mm -hmm. if I had seen, apart from Panji, I'd seen a Zap Mallet, a Hammer in there mm -hmm. telling the story because there was a Hammer era too where he birthed a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. And if you say that you're doing hip life rewind, I've been trying to look for the meaning of rewind to see <laughs> what really, no, sincerely, I've, 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 and I've looked for synonyms Themes of rewind. I want to really understand what the documentary was about mm. because if you say rewind, I think you're going back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're going back, you're going back to look at what was in the past with new faces. I don't get it. Mm. Or mm. you're going back to look at the past with old faces and let the new faces tell what is done to them. I don't sincerely get <coughs> the cracks mm -hmm. of the documentary Questions because of the easy. name that is being tagged with mm -hmm. hip life rewind. Because mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. looking at the meaning and it doesn't fit in the narrative for me. So, but apart from that, I love the fact that if it was to look at the future and to look at what is now, let's go back and look at what we took from rewind to what was taken from there and look at what is happening now. Then maybe you begin to make some sense because you've looked at touch some people from the past. Mm -hmm. The Reggie in himself in the um, yes, Ibrahim in the Panji in there. Then you throw it on us new faces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the fact. I think the bigger winner in this whole documentary is Eno. If you ask me, mm. yeah, the shout she got from manifest the ability to express herself and i think sh look if you ask me again i think manifest sold Enu that he sold anything in that documentary mm. it got me excited because i don't even think that if you listen to the documentary properly for hip life was, i don't think, i know i'm not supposed to ask uh -huh. questions now till we but let me ask you since you said you, you said this for hip life um was eno the right representation to um oh. In, in this generation, for a female, okay. there's nobody else. Okay. But then for a rewind... You know, for, that's what I'm saying, that, <laughs> that in this generation... Right. Because I'm still bothered about the tag of the documentary. Rewind, it doesn't yeah. even tell the story if that is a hip life rewind and you're using new faces who are telling new stories. Then the, the tag for the documentary itself is flawed. So that's how come it's it's having an everybody who seems to have played a role seems to have an issue that if you're talking about the story of hip life, why is JQ in this conversation? JQ. Why is Akatechie? Why is Achiami? You know, in this Sasquatch. conversation, why why are all those people? Why is Lord Kenya mm. in this for conversation? Crutches. You know, why is DH for crutches in this conversation? So everybody <laughs> seems to be worried because of the tag, hip life rewind. But beyond that, I love the fact that the young folks are telling what it did to them. And, you know, people are saying that Manifest didn't have said that, look, sincerely, the thing is extinct, you know. That, and I'm happy the people who are concerned because there's a thing that they say, until the lions tell their story, the hunter or the hunter always, tells their story, there was what, 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 Exactly. So we have not told our story. Somebody comes from somewhere, tells us the way he wants to tell us. And we are worried. What have we been doing all these years? We've been fighting about who is who and it's not Reggie who brought hip life and it's not what was that. And somebody says, let me tell it to suit my narration or let me tell it to suit whatever it would suit for me. And we are worried. Mm. I think that we have a big problem in this country. We don't tell our you own have, stories. You have, you have now set the tone well, for a very major conversation. We also have um, Hama of the last two 
who has joined us via Zoom. Um, I want to just quickly acknowledge his presence on the show as well. Um, Hama, if you're there, just maybe you can just um, say a good morning. Okay, I'm told that the line dropped, uh, but sorry to have kept you on the line for uh, a bit. But we'll get him back on the line for the conversation. But um, we also have Wachami Kofi, who's also joined us now on the line. Let me just uh, have say hello to, to him. Uh, our big boss, good morning. Okay, I'm told that we also morning, lost morning, him as well. Boy, let's let's go that's on him, to... That's him, he's speaking. Um, pardon me. He spoke, he spoke. Okay. Actually, I mean, spoke. Oh, he spoke. Mm. Um, then I must have missed out. Let me just get my headset back on so I can, I can properly hear him. Um, <laughs> I must have missed out on that. Um, to our big boss. Oh, Chami Kofi, good morning. Good morning, Jay Foley. How are you? I am fine, sir. It's been a minute. Let me say Happy New Year and Happy Valentine's Day. Ah, I take all the two in good stride, man. Amen. Good morning again. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, the intention of this morning or uh, uh, in our conversation is not to um, necessarily downplay anybody's hard work or efforts in trying to document this amazing story and the journey of hip life to where it is. But we want to understand properly because it is very important that the generation of today has uh, get the exact story, um, you know, and we properly document the history so that it, it's, it becomes good archive and uh, reference for us if we are, we are to let a new generation lead us um this gender that we created that is for us uh unlike afrobeat and i'm a piano that is from elsewhere but i want to first ask if you have seen the documentary uh good morning to everybody listening uh, i mean everybody on your network mm. definitely to answer your question is uh is affirmative is a yes a big yes i took time to watch it uh the sunday night and that, that was actually the cause of the rant on social media mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've watched the document. Yeah. So, okay. So what do you make of the, um, you know, the entire documentary? Uh, and if you, you personally can tell what purpose you feel that, uh, or the intention of this documentary, uh, before I even ask what, possibly why were you contacted, were you engaged, or did you hear about it in the making? Okay, that's a very good question. No, I am not even bothered about whether I was contacted or not. Um, I'm looking at the the, the, the finished product, which um, is titled Is a Hip Life Rewind, and it's 30 minutes plus of a documentary that tries, I'm, I'm very emphatic on the word try, to tell the story of hip, hip life and... Uh, well, I don't know. But after watching the whole thing, I felt like, one, it was misleading. Two, it didn't contain the facts to make it a, a, a hip life documentary. That doesn't mean that it didn't contain some amount of truth. Okay. The truth, according to Reggie Rockstone, is indelible. You cannot wipe it. That is Reggie's story, and he told it perfect. Yes. He came to Ghana, he started hip life, and nobody can take it from Reggie Rockstone. He ID'd it, like he would put it, he tagged it, gave it a name, and started a movement. Panji Anov on the other side, yes, was talking about his contributions to, this, to, to the rap industry in Ghana when, when it started, how it started, and his contributions. Nobody's taking that from anybody. Abraham Ohinijan on the other side, of course, the visuals, the contributions, the Reggie music videos right from the onset up to later times, everybody that Abraham worked with, you cannot take it from him. My issue is the angle when you watch the whole documentary. If I'm not mistaken, and you are talking about rewinding hip life, then we are talking about the history of it the creation of it, uh, the, source, the sustenance of it, and everything in between. And the documentary doesn't tell the story like it should be told. One, if we are talking about hip life in this country, the genre that I have contributed my blood, sweat, and tears. Two, you cannot talk about hip life, 30 minutes of it, without mentioning the names of Mali. 
because it's somebody's idea, but it's somebody who technically produced it for it to come alive. And that is my first resentment right there. When I finished, forget that, you know, it doesn't mention the people that actually made hip life come alive. Registered it, but it took a whole movement for it to come alive. And, and I'm going to borrow Parkinson's words here and say, Mona Mudebai, but yen yen hit. It's not a one-person movement. It's not a one-sided story like it was depicted in the narration, in the documentary. Unless they were just telling the story of who started it and limited the whole thing to that. Then you, then the title will be wrong. You cannot call it Hip Life Rewind. Everything rewind is retrospect. We are looking, the, we are looking at the genre in retrospection. So the story must be told right. How could you tell a hip life story? 30 minutes of it, or let me say 30 minutes plus of it, and not mention Zap. You did not mention Lord Kenya. You did not mention Achiami. You did not mention Akitichi. You did not mention uh, uh, Sasquatch. No Paukese, no uh, 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 Deba, no Exdo, no Chicago. No, I mean, I could go on and on. Swazi B, all of these people, the core of this journal, the people that made her head turn, speakers move, the people that were on stage, book back. You cannot do that. Does this and it doesn't okay. make it all go well. You, you look at the documentary, it's like, ah, what are you people trying to achieve with this? Because this is not our story. I'm, go I'm not going to fetch from far. Let let's go to Nigeria. In recent times, they did um, a documentary on Afrobeat. Even to the DJs that play the music, were giving their little credit. They were. They were duly represented. So if anybody is going to do anything and they are going to tell a story, my little thing is, let them tell the story right. Let them tell it in its whole completion. Let us know the picture because posterity is going to judge us. Tomorrow when we, we are not here, some young man who will want to research into what happened before his time will pick up this documentary and will think this is the story and probably will build another, another documentary based on this one. And what have we done to the next generation? It wouldn't be fair to them. In no way will it be fair. Zab Malek, the producers, the, the people who hammer of the last two, um, hammer wasn't even captured. You talk about hip life and hammer is not in there. How is that even possible? Since you mentioned the name hammer, um, uh, he's uh, he's closer to his uh, his camera, making him look very buff. <laughs> <laughs> that possibly has a lot to get off uh, his chest. Hama, he, Hama knows that uh, he's he's a godfather. So, <laughs> Hama, I already got you. <laughs> um, it's Mike. Yes, Hama, please unmute your your microphone so we can hear you as well. Um, uh, Hama, please. So, Chami Kofi has also said uh, a lot. Um, are you indifferent on what he shared, and what are your opinions with regards to the documentary? On what exactly? Um, I there, there are two fronts to the documentary. Uh, I was I was asked about hip life being dead by a remark by somebody on the documentary, and also uh, what uh, what how I feel about not being invited. Which which okay, which so exactly start do you from, want to Let's start do, from you your general opinion on the documentary, its content, and uh, possibly what message probably uh, it was it's it's sought to share out put out there. I just want your general opinion on that. Then I can come to asking if you were engaged in the documentary. Maybe you think, turned it down or, or of some sort. I I think I I think that I think that the documentary in. Uh, in a whole uh, was a 
was was misplaced. Um, I think that thirty minutes is, is not enough time to talk about hip life rewind in the first place. So they should have renamed it something else, just a quick a hip life quickie or something. Just a run through <laughs> the, you know. I I don't think that um, hip life yep. rewind like thirty minutes is enough time to to go through hip life rewind. Uh, I, I felt like. You see, there's been errors. Hip Life, I've always seen Hip Life. Hip Life was steered by the producers. Um, before Achami came from the US and all, I mean, after Achami came from the US, in Ghana, the revolution of Hip Life was from the production houses. The Nana Kin and the Saminis and the Exdos, Zab Mallet and the uh, Reggie Rockstones and the Nananum, uh, uh, Nananum and the... Um, what you call it, uh, um, uh, Lifeline Family and the T Blazes and the JDs, yeah, um, and the JQ and the Book Box and the Forex Force, uh, Comfort Quad Day and the Morris Baby Face comes. Hip Life was about the producers and their comps. It was, it was a revolution coming from production comps. And I think that whenever they want to address Hip Life, they should. Take it from that angle. It's easier to cite the, you know, Zap's camp. You know that Aketichie, Lokenya, everybody from Zap, you know, Achame. Uh, we, we know Zap's world and we know JQ's world. We know what JQ did, the impact from the, you know, book bags and the Forex Force and that whole generation. We know the VIP camp too from that whole area. Uh, we also know the executive producers from RG Coat to Goodies to all these people, uh, Slip Music. We know that the, these areas. I think that Hip Life, I acknowledge Reggie, what he did. Um, it took Reggie's father to, to take the risk, to take the risk when everybody was saying that this is youth music, this, this new youth music is noise, and it wasn't going anywhere. And it was a joke. Reggie's father took a risk and took it to market. He actually paid money, branded it, um, Reggie named it, because I think that the hip life name itself, the problem with this whole hip life thing, that the Afro beats and hip life is going back and forth, it came, it, it, it came from the fact that at the time, Reggie needed to brand this thing. You can't have hip life you can't have rap music in Ghana without branding it. But you realize that high life was a dominant uh, uh, genre. Nobody had a say. Our youth music had no place. Nobody took us serious. So he took the risk and he named hip life. He, so he branded it. Now, when he was branding it, he wasn't thinking international. He wasn't thinking anything. All he was thinking was that, can we have our own music our own rap music as the youth, you know, he just created something for the youth. You know, he, he couldn't think that far at that time. So we have to give it to Reggie. We have to stop bashing the fact that, oh, hip life and Kobe, Ibiya, the youth is not connecting with hip life. Whoever is making music now is as a result of what hip life did. So if, it's, if, if the name has changed and it has evolved to I remember it, it, it evolved to uh, GH rap. When the Skillions came about, uh, the, well, one, one of the last major camps in hip life, uh, the Skillions, that produced J Soul, that produced uh, EL, that produced Bo J, J Town. These, these boys renamed it GH rap. And so if you look at it very carefully, you realize that is the name. Hip life is not dead. Hip life, the the whole argument or the whole um, um, rewind thing they're trying to say about hip life and Afrobeats is the name that we couldn't sustain. Now, we couldn't keep the name. We couldn't let the name go far. We couldn't go to the world with this name. And Afrobeats came and took the, their name and took it to the world. So hip life is not dead. Uh, I think that uh, what the, the whole documentary 
try to speak to is misplaced. Um, we need to do a proper hip life documentary that 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 speaks to the the generations and how it evolved and how Afrobeat from uh, from Ghana to Nigeria took over the world and all that. I I think that this whole thing it it be like it be confusing. Okay. Um. You know, it yeah. should it should be separated properly. Uh, Chami Coffee, do you, you also know, agree with Hama when he says uh, hip life is not dead? Okay, uh, you see, I am past the argument of who invented hip life and who called it what. It's established. You understand? That argument yes. is going on back Even and forth. Even with that, J.W. Ambule says and that wasting he... Everybody. Did Blamble says that he was the originator? I don't know if he heard that mm. bit in the documentary. Uh, Ambule was claiming high life. He wasn't claiming hip life. No, he, he wasn't claiming high life. He if you listen to him, he actually he said that about he, rap. he rap. Mm. Like yeah. the uh, the Achia, uh, the Achiam is the 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 mm. lingu, uh, the uh, rap, wasn't... rap music oh, is not hip life. Just were, rap, rap music. There were rappers even before Ambule, but Ambule. Mm. Before hip life, yeah. Yeah, before hip life. We are talking about hip life, the branded genre, and the yeah. rules that was made for it. So Ambule doesn't come in when this so it argument means that, comes up. So, so it, means that, was right. it means that he was even a wrong choice to have been featured on that documentary then. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> he doesn't... Exactly. Because Medawabina... Listen, Aziz Isaac will easily come out and claim that he actually brought hip life. Because Medawabina was a big hit, yeah, even yeah. before Reggie Rock. So. Yeah. 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 But he didn't hip life. Yeah. We are talking about the brand hip life that had the exactly. youth putting in their money, their sweat, their blood, everything to make sure that it, it, it held its place against all the arguments and all the criticisms. What, what did it represent? Okay. What did hip life what did represent? Who represent? Hip life, what did it represent? You know how the hip hop represents the you, maybe gang culture, oppression, storytelling. What was hip life primarily yeah. aimed at, at, at representing? Of course, speaking our minds, um, looking at the social political landscape, people made songs that criticized government and everything. It gave job to the youth. It gave money, you put money in the pocket of the youth. If you found yourself an executive producer, you were duly promoted and everything, you you get gigs. It gave people the chance to actually explore the world, travel. All of these things came into play. It engaged the youth from, you know, engaging in bad vices, social vices, that is, and, and all of these things. It kept us on the ground. You, you were thinking about the next big hit rather than thinking about how to do internet fraud, like it happened in Nigeria. Even the Nigerian movement was calculated. They had to learn from the hip life movement because the music engaged us so much. We didn't have time for anything else. And that those are the upsides of, of the genre of hip life and what it did in its time. Like I was saying, me, I'm past who invented it and who is the owner. On the, it's the same thing that killed hip life. I like Hamas submission when he's saying that well. It's, it's not dead from a perspective. But today, let's look at age 20, 20, going on to about 25. Who is practicing hip life? Who is calling their music hip life? Who is holding up that flag? It's dead. Nobody is doing that. And it is because of this same who owns hip life argument. Because listen, we are Ghanaians. We know ourselves. When you are rising, people begin to envy you. And if you are able to rise, irrespective of the envy, now they join you. It is our tradition. It's in our culture. That is who we are. Unfortunately or fortunately for that matter. In Reggie's case, immediately that I am the one that invented it. I am the creator. I am the one. Everybody said, okay, if it's for you, then take it. So everybody stopped calling their music hip life. Because immediately you are you, you subscribe to hip life, it looks like you are working for Reggie, who is going to take all the credit at the end of the day. So the youth is like, if I'm going to do that, and that is what is going to happen, then let me also create something that I'll become great and known for. So you realize that 
the Tama boys, when they were coming up, brought a, a, a tree pop. It wasn't sustainable. It was people didn't join that movement. Then uh, 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 the Skillians era, which is a GH rap. They tried that. That didn't hold either because now nobody is trying to contribute to anybody's idea because they know tomorrow. Look at the argument on Azuntu, whether it was Sakodia who brought it about or blah, blah, blah. That also killed Azuntu. But Azuntu became a worldwide phenomenon. Everybody was doing this thing. And we, with our mouths and our argument and who owns what, will kill it eventually. Now, Afrobeat is big. Let's ask ourselves, who is arguing about who owns Afrobeat? You see, so yes, Mona Modebai, Yen 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 hit. Reggie Rockstone alone couldn't have done it. Reggie Rockstone brought it about, but it took everybody that produced, put their money, their talent, and everything in there to make up life what it became. Off the Until question. somebody wanted so much to, to take all the credit, and everybody yeah. is like, okay, if that is the case, then I'm not doing it anymore. Okay, so just based on what you're saying, I want to take something I, I think, uh, you're saying uh -huh. and ask Hama. Um, that Hama had mentioned when we're talking about the BBC documentary, we're making reference to that, well, there are gaps in there, that we should look at telling the story from the perspective of the producers, and we, it might give us better insight. I do believe that... Um, Journals of music are, are run by rhythm, and hence the reason why we can easily identify I'm a piano or even an Afro beat. Now, during the era of hip life, Hammer, don't you think that we had, um, uh, we had a clash of rhythms from your end and uh, from JQ's and uh, you know other producers similar to what JQ was playing there, the Jama, Apietus, and all that also possibly didn't help us uh, better understand what exactly or how exactly we could identify hip life, like how I can hear a hip hop beat and know this is hip hop, and I can hear a pop beat and know this is pop. To I know this is hip hop. To, uh, Hama. That's that's a very good question. That, to, that's to, add good Jay's, question. to add on to Jay's, to add on to Jay's, that is actually. Okay. Uh, to add on to Jay's, um, Jay's statement, uh, we had instances where we had hip hop beats with tree performance on it, right? And then we had hi uh, high life beats with rap on them. That kind of also brought about the same conflict you are speaking about, because uh, Reggie was doing more. Yeah. Hip hop as uh, rap on uh, high lifestyles, the hip hop stuff, rap on hip hop stuff, mm -hmm. and then the other squad were doing more uh, high life with tree rap on it, mm -hmm. and both were classified as um, hip life. Hip life. Uh, how about your reaction? Uh, and uh, I see your chummy Kofi yeah, also. So I agree. I, I agree. No, I agree that um, that created a, a lot of confusion. That's why I keep saying that hip life wasn't a genre. You see. Um, Reggie just wanted a way to get Ghana to accept our youth music. Rap music was coming to Ghana for, for commercial purposes. Rap was already in Ghana, but nobody was doing it for commercial purposes. Now, to be able to sell it, he needed to brand it. Now, we started calling everything hip life, including Jama every youth music hip life. And it didn't help. That, that should give you the evidence that hip life wasn't a genre. We just found, we just wanted a name for our thing. If you listen to my 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 sound at the time, at, at that era, I didn't know anything about high life. I used to shuttle the States and Ghana a lot throughout Pesek. And so my whole life was about Das FX, um, uh, Pete Rock, Eric Sermon, and um, Paris Smith. I was doing a lot of Red Man, a Method Man, Snoop Dogg, 1992, throughout Pesek. So I, I was really a real hip hop producer. Then I Ghana had to accept my hip hop. To get Ghana to accept my hip hop, I had to dumb it down. Now, because people wanted to dance. Ghana here, the hardcore hip hop that I used to love wasn't being accepted. So I decided that I was going to do, instead of the hip hop, you know, that big boy beat, I, I, I started playing. Now, this one was more favorable to the Ghanaian because he wanted to dance. So if you, even if you look at me, I had to dumb 
my sound down. Everybody was trying to get Ghana to accept us. So I want us to not confuse the whole thing. Ghana at that time, Reggie wasn't a genius trying to come up with uh, no, like he didn't know what this thing was going to become. He was an ordinary human being who at the time wanted Ghana to accept us. And he did very well by branding it so that Ghana accepted it. As we went along, it evolved. The dance hall from Nanakin, Samini and the, the rest were, were all called hip life. If you listen to Kokoveli and Samini and all of them, they were still hip life. If you listen to JQ and his Jama, it was still hip life. That should let you know that he didn't create a genre. He created our youth music and he named it hip life. Going forward, I understand what you were saying, high life beats and rap. It's because people were trying to see, we were, we were still evolving. We were still looking for our way. We, we didn't have our way because we didn't, it didn't exist on our markets. Even the distributors were, were finding it very difficult to accept it to go and sell because after Reggie, Re Reggie them, they have to they, they have to do things themselves. They didn't even have a distributor. You know, it was after Reggie, you guys were the first people to have the di distribution. Uh, I think uh, um, Achiame, because of the high life sound and uh, Nana Numen and the rest, they had distributors. You know, so I we, we what you guys are saying. We 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 put it in the record shops. I, you know, Achame was yes. the first thing to put our music on a CD and put it in a record shop because everybody was yeah. cassette, cassette back in the day. We yeah. we put places where people could actually pick their money and go and buy. Okay, we started off with cassettes, but then we advanced it to CD and they took us even serious the more because we were doing things other than they expected us to do. To, to add to what Hama is saying, you see, it is true. If we look at hip life by the Arabs, you look at, you also see the beauty of the creation. Hip life, the name became an identity for youthful music. And hip life yeah. was characterized by fusions. You could take any music from the world and add Ghanaian elements so that Ghanaians can actually relate to it. You put your rap on Vanacula it. or anything. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and you are good to go. So if we are going to define hip life, how to make hip life, just like jazz has its rules, reggae has its rules, hip hop has its rules. Every genre of music has rules that you actually engage for the music to sound like. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Then we are looking at fusions. Because if you listen to a song like Alice, which is the Messi number song, this song contains elements of hip hop. The drum line is typically hip hop. The chord progression is high life. The bass solo that was played was not even a thing for people to do at that time. Then we put a little bit of dance soul in it via Yogi Dogi. Then the singing was not the typical high life singing. We engaged R&B from Nana Kwame, who was a typical R&B singer. So that one song, fuses a lot of musical journeys to actually pick one picture. Oh. There's rap in there, there's dance in there, there's R&B in there, there's hip hop in there. Everything we listen to, every music that we knew, we put it in one song. So see, and, and, and that, I've heard Reggie on platforms actually say that if anything would define the word hip life, then it will be that Achami Mesanaba song, the fusion song. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you, you've, you've put it together quite beautifully. Um, so my, what I'm hearing is that hip life was ne definitely never a genre. It was a, um, a, a movement, a representation of the youth. And somehow Thank you. The, Thank you. the creative expressions varied depending on who was expressing themselves. And because of that, there's a bit of everything at that time mixed in. So instead of fighting each other, yeah. they should have maybe come together more. And does that go to, to, to Buttress' manifest yeah. point in his statement that uh, we slacked and didn't pay attention to it and we're rather doing this for me is for you 
and killed it the same way we did this for me yeah. for you and we killed azonto yeah. and we might be on the way to kill afrobeat <laughs> with our catalas and our catalas of judgment <laughs> I think Azonto, I think Azonto and the rest shouldn't be brought. You see, these these groups, you know, the fusions he was talking about, some of these things are not genres. They are they are fusions, you know. Yeah. And the more they, they try and classify them as oh, we went from hip life, went to Azonto. Azonto was a groove, was a dance. Yeah. It was a it was a groove yeah. that influenced a particular movement. Mm. That a, 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 like a particular dance. But but still you sustained know, rap not music. Really it was all say again but still was able to sustain rap music yeah, yeah. okay so um yeah but no rap I, rap music I, listen okay so how mind uh, rap, rap, rap music can, can survive how about chami kofi please let yeah. me just uh, chip I mean, this look in at, that look at we we uh, we, no, we want to look at kwaito uh, hama please we want to renew the um uh, we want to get ourselves back on again. I beg your pardon. We have a little technical challenge in here, but I want to just try and sort it out real quickly. Um, so please just hold on for me for a second. But when we come back on that, I want us to look at. Um, uh, it, it looks as if we made a mistake, but did we really make a mistake? Because we we're in a certain way, in the moment, at a certain point in time, enjoying a certain reaction from what we had built. So we want to really look at the fact that possibly. Uh, at that moment, we were building something, but was it an external force that shut us down? We want to look at that when you come back real quickly as we try and um, uh, sort out this real quick. But guys, so we've we've heard from our guests and what they're saying, but I'm just taking a second look at it again, saying that, okay, we, we were in a certain space, enjoying a certain, you know, uh, evolution. Um... The songs were evolving. People were, you know, getting creative. We were at, at the peak of our, our creativity, if I can say that. Mm. Did we, was it, should we really say that we, we are to blame for not paying attention to it? Because it's the attention we paid is what created all the other things we're doing. GH rap can't be compared to the, uh, the impact of hip life. I mean, GH rap was a certain sect. It probably didn't even get to certain regions. It was a certain, you know, group. Uh, Skillion's music they didn't get so commercial as we, thought it, as, it, as we thought it would be until the individuals went separate. So let's also put that fact down. Mm -hmm. Until we had JSO going his own way, Ball J doing his own thing. Uh, and we can go on and on and on and on. You understand? Cyril, you were there. You know? So I don't see G GH but rap Cyril, as a, own, Was it GH rap or it was... I beg you. I'll it get was there. Yeah. Um, see, we are going to get Hama and uh, Kofi back, back on yeah. there. Yeah. Kofi said something beautiful. Because Reggie was trying to lead the brand, people felt like if I also promote it, I'm doing free promo I, for... I beg to differ on that. No, right I know. But let, me, let me, let me, let me, land, let me, let me move on. Land, Same thing definitely. happened with Azonto. Mm -hmm. When Azonto was big and everybody loved the music, and then. people were worried. Was it Gasmilla? Was it Sack? Yeah. Was, was, yeah. was it Crankman? <sighs> and because of that, people were reluctant to actually embrace the genre. I still disagree, but let's go on. Then <laughs> move on. Those who wanted to do their music and felt like Azonto was beneath them or... Because of the whole noise of Azonto, who is who, blah, 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 blah. We're going to do our thing. Then GH Rap also popped up again. GH Rap didn't just come at the early days of uh, Skillion. There was a whole rap stint after Azonto. There was a lot of rappers. That was Manifest Era, right? Yes. Mm. Right? There was a whole rap stint after Azonto as well. What I'm picking is that every time there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a dynamic or an evolution to the Ghanaian music, we don't focus on sustaining the movement. The movement, the fight of who started it, who does it belong to, what is the authentic way, overwhelms us actually focusing on the fact that people love this. Let's just feel free and do it. Like we say, I don't think Nigerians, we've said this time, I don't think the Nigerian people are fighting about if Whiskey started uh, Afrobeat, yeah, Afrobeat or Bena or Davido. They are all just going with it. And today we were praising uh, Ruga. No, but you, you see, you see the difference in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Much as they don't fight about who started it, they acknowledge that a certain fella laid the foundation, and this is what we are missing out on now. Now the and that's what I'm waiting for all of them to speak. My only question is, why are we complaining? We are not even able to tell our own stories properly. Somebody has gone to say it, however, and we are complaining. Now, I heard Hama says it's about time. I don't know if Hama or Achai said it's that it's about time we tell the hip. 
after how many years now that it's almost extinct we want to tell the story people have tried to tell the story but like they themselves are saying their conversation is it is not this person it is that that person so people are afraid to speak their truth because i remember very well that there was a time that there was a huge conversation about how we started this hip life and every time reggie spoke there's a conflicting person or there's somebody who has a different uh conversation so we have grown now they are saying it's a movement are we now going to change it from a journal to a movement we are we are distorting everything we have tried to build now these kids or these ones who are saying that oh now Afrobeat came out of hip life will not be able to say that anymore because you're now telling us it's a movement it's not, it wasn't a journal we've grown knowing that it's a how will we even be see it is not even going to be possible. But you see, the Nigerians are not fighting over Afrobeats who started in their generation because they have given all credit to Fela. I'm sure there's somebody who helped Fela who will say, Oh, I laid the instrumentals. I even told Fela to sing it this way. I even told Fela. Who tagged it? It wasn't Fela. I did not run in with it. Why are we worried about who tagged it here? Yet we want to say that, oh, we, we, we have become who we are today because there was a certain group of people. And, and the reason why I side, I side with you 100% when you're saying is that, you know, to add to it, that's why I, I disagree a bit with the fact that um, it was, you know, us cutting short the lifespan of, you know, of Afrobeats and all. I, I, I disagree with it a bit because I also f have a, a different school of thought, which we'll come to now. And I want to put that um, the, to Hama and uh, Chami Kofi. Okay, uh, if they are, they are back on the line with us, let me confirm uh, if they're back on the to, line. I was going to ask a question to that effect. Uh, to, to that effect that, as well, that, yeah. That's, yeah. That's the evolution. Okay. All right. Um, Hama and... Uh, okay, yeah, great. Thanks. Oh. Thanks for joining us again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let me allow Olile to make his point. Please. Yes. Um, tying into what you said and what Miji said, what I want to find out from uh, Chami Kofi and then Hama is... So are we seeing that the evolution of and I don't I don't I don't know whether I should call it a sound or a brand. <laughs> it's it's the downfall of the sound. <laughs> yes. I don't know if yes exactly. That's what I wanted to yeah, find out. It's the evolution of the sound or the brand, the downfall of Were we wrong were we wrong to have evolved uh hip life music? No, no, no. Uh, we were not, but I like what the girl said, Miss um, V. Miss G. Miss G. 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 Sorry, is it Miss G? Miss yeah. G. Yeah. Yes, Miss G. Yeah. I, I like what she said about um, um, where I mean, Fela and all. Look, we. It's important that we always acknowledge where something came from. However, we don't expect anybody to rub it in our face. <laughs> now, is the rubbing it in our face that got some people to be like, uh, Emi Fawadie, mm -hmm. what you say? Now, we all, we, we acknowledge when people are originators or something, of, 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 of something. It's, it's important, but when you start to gloat, then you infuriate others. And the people be like, nah, by you, what shows you did this? What shows you did that? Now, um, the guy who asked if, were we wrong for, I mean, it was the evolution, was it the evolution that caused the demise of, the possible demise of hip life? Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, hip life is not about the sound. If you say hip life uh, is a genre, would you classify JQ sound and my sound as the same genre uh -uh. in the world? It is two different genres. So that is why it's there important to know that it's a movement. It was a movement yeah. because we, we, we Ghanaians wanted a place in the ears. The older people who could, if you, if you can remember, the time Rajiv, uh, Achami and all of them started this thing, the argument was in Penifono and they are the people we have to do the music for because they have the money to buy. The youth didn't have money to buy. If you go back, I mean, I, rem I, I, I remember the history. People didn't, people, the argument for Come on, we are losing your shot. We are losing uh, you visually. I don't thing. know if you can position yourself so we can see you uh, well. Uh, your, your phone or the camera. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh <laughs> and then yeah, you, yeah, I yeah, haven't better. moved. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm saying that uh, hmm, I, I I'm even lost for thought. Yeah. But the point I was, I was trying to make is that 
the, on the business side, people wanted to know if we can market this thing. And the reason why you have to acknowledge that it is it was a movement was because there were too many genres surviving in this one thing. Now, the rap side, even Nigeria, their rap music is called rap music. It's called hip-hop. It's not called Afrobeats. Their rap music is called rap music. In South Africa, their hip-hop music is called hip-hop music. Um, what's the boy's name? The boy who, who came at SAC recently. Was Nasty, Nasty C. Nasty C. Nasty C. Nasty. No. Nasty, Nasty, Nasty C. Nasty C, yeah. He's, he, he, he's a hip hopper. He's not saying he's an I'm a piano guy or he's a quieto guy. You know? So uh, we, what, what, what we did wrong was call everything hip life because we were trying to find a, a place in our society to accept us uh, so that we can do business. You know? So I, I think that um, I don't disagree with the fact that um, hip life the name Hip Life has died. The brand name Hip Life has died. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we have to acknowledge that these boys who are saying they are not doing Hip Life, of course you're not doing the name Hip Life. Of course you have rebranded the name. But know that if there, were, if there was no VIP, there was no Okonfor Kwa Day, there was no T-Blaze, there was no Achiame, there wouldn't be you. What you are is as a result of what was. So it is actually, it, it, it's a shame that the name has gotten people confused, but it was our youth music that has grown to Black Sharif. From I, then I, I, I want to ask to a Black question, Sharif. and I don't know whether... Uh, okay, before before you come in, I want to ask a question based on what he said. I, I'm, I'm getting worried because, you know, when we were growing up, they told us that before now, we had a dead dim li high life. Yes, we had contemporary, that's what we are doing now, contemporary high life. They haven't made an effort. I don't know, maybe the difference within that era was that nobody put it in anybody's face. So maybe they accepted to go with it and kept evolving with the genre. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it like, okay, maybe we had... Contemporary high life was R&B. Mm. You see, that the Kobna Kobna and those people were called contemporary because they realized that it was it was more modern. You see, they were classifying the authentic high life as high life. And anybody who came to dilute it with youth music or uh, uh, the, the future of, I mean, the, the present sound, the present sound was classified as contemporary. So, so the Kobna Kobnas and the uh, uh, Nakwamis and all of them were classified as, you know, like a contemporary high life. You see, we just get confused because we, we, we find it difficult to adjust with evolution. Mm. We don't realize that R&B in 1980 is still R&B now. The funk was still in there. But R&B in 1980 was a still R&B now. So how now, about, it brings me to what you said. To, what what uh, you said is what is why I'm I'm asking this question because he said that we cannot compare uh, the hip life from when Reggie tagged it or whatever to what Achiami did to what your sound is. But I'm thinking that could we have just no been no no adding, I didn't say that. Oh, I thought I heard you say that. That was why I was getting worried. I, that, did, I didn't say we that, cannot compare. No, you're saying there were changes no, 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 in sound. Can, I, did, I didn't say we cannot compare. Okay, I thought you were making an argument that there yes, was I changes. Yes, I said the sound. Uh -huh. The sound. So it sounded to me as though yes. you said because you see, of the, the changes. Sound genres. Mm. No. Okay, let me let me make this clear. Okay. Genres are mainly sound. Jazz is a genre. Reggae is a genre. Now within reggae, there is roots rock. There is um, but that a uh, 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 lavish rock. There is uh, this, there is that. There's so many things within that genre. So, so a so rule of like, engagement when it comes to genres. So, yes. basically, you want to produce a reggae that sound, means. the elements, the ingredients you put in there to spell reggae. In the same way, this is my little contribution the variety or the, the variety that happened to hip life. Hip life according to Hammer, hip life according to JQ, hip life according to Zab Malik, hip life according to Morris Babyface, hip life according to this, comes together to spell exactly what the, the brand that was created actually meant. What I see is hip life is equal to pop music. 
is popular music. That is what Reggie created. That you were you brought about rap, and it wasn't the known thing in mainstream Ghana music industry, and it became the most popular thing and everything automatically qualifies hip life as our local version of what they call pop music in America. Because you realize that under hip hop, under R&B, under rock, and uh, at every point in time, somebody is creating something which also becomes number one on the billboard charts. And they call all of these things pop. So the, the bigger spectrum, you see, we are trying to downplay the beauty of hip life and what it really means that anybody can actually cook anything in a studio, okay? Put it together, bring it out, and it's going to be accepted by the youth. Made it popular music. And it actually broadens the spectrum for everybody to operate. So it, be, it doesn't become a one-way thing or a boring thing. So constantly, people with different creativity will operate, bring about new things, which falls under popular music, and our popular music was time to hit life. So when Emma is saying it's not a genre per se, I, I, to about 60%, I would agree with him. But it is also a genre in the sense that when you bring about fusions and create something out of these fusions, you have actually applied rules of engagement, and every time anybody does that, that also qualifies to be a genre. Hmm. Okay. Um. Please, Ochami and Hama. I don't know if you've lost Hama. Is Hama still on the line? Um. Oh. Okay. We're trying to uh, get him back. But I was going to say something. I think I need. I need to have Hama on the line <laughs> because it, this is, this is a this is a stray bullet from me to the two of you <laughs> that we need a lot of clarification uh, on. And I would want us to get and this answer today. Um, I don't know. I, I want to hold the question till we get Hammer back so on the line. Ask, so, uh, Olele, please. So, so, out of all the things you've said right now, yeah, now I am confused because does that mean that Ghana does not own any genre of music? High life. The hotel is high life. No, I mean, ap ap apart from See, high life, I just, I, just, I just want to, like, I want to The really conversation understand. is exactly where you're going, right, mm. bro? We have failed consistently to allow genres to solidify their place in our music industry. Mm. And because of that, every artist who comes out with something new has the mandate or the right to name a, a, a genre or a style. Mm. Partly because the artists themselves don't understand what a genre is and mm. what a genre is about. Mm. You can do hip hop and have jazz elements in your hip hop. That doesn't mean you are doing jazz music. Mm -hmm. Same way you can do gospel and have hip hop elements in your gospel. Doesn't mean you're a hip hop okay. artist. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Let me ask a Chamek let me ask a Chamek this 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 <laughs> question. Um, the, way, the way you put it you see when you say gospel is not a genre mm -hmm. of music. Gospel a yasempa. Is preaching the word of God. There's nothing like gospel music. There's music and there's gospel. So you could choose hip hop and, and, and spread your gospel on hip hop. You could choose reggae, spread your gospel on reggae. You could choose uh, 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 Kwaitu and spread your gospel on Kwaitu. Mm. There's nothing like gospel music. There's music okay. and there's gospel. Now, you see, even with our high life, a uh, borrowed glory, we, we, we should be emphatic. Hmm. If you listen to salsa, you listen to Dominican music. I have taken my records. I have gone downtown New York. I am try there, there used to be a distributor in New York back in the day, 99, 2000, Putumayo music. We wanted to so much distribute our music on this network because it was going to give us a worldwide platform. When we got there, the feedback was, your music sounds like everything else. Because they can hear salsa, they can hear Latino music, they can hear Mexican, they can hear Cuban, they can hear everything in our music. Mm. Okay, let me. And that tells us that the creation we call our own, mm -hmm. including the sound of Fusita, including the sound of Nana Kwame Ampe, go to Ampedu's records, and you realize that he was sampling actually from Cuban music. Mm. Some of the songs are even Dito. Okay, so please okay. let me... Let and, me... And, and what we did is when we added local elements, which is our Agbaja timings, our Palogo timings, our 
all of these rhythms that we have, we create fusions and therefore can lay ownership of, of these fusions. Mm. So it's not like nobody has been able to clarify or identify our music. What we have created out of the bits that we were able to put together now becomes ours. And hip life is, um, high life is solidified in this spectrum. Okay. In the interest of time, high I want to ask you this question. Roots. I, I, I want to ask you a question real quickly because our time is almost up. Uh, this is this my I, I, and I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. So um, first, let me establish a fact and then put the question to you. So when Reggie Rockstone started doing his hip life music, um, uh, you, it was, you know, the beats were very, some of them were very foreign until he started fusing in some high life rhythms in there and rapping over them, converting them into, you know, part hip hop and then high life, you know, reaffirming the whole hip life. Uh, hip life. So it was easy to have a Reggie Rockstone do a, 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 a song over a Zach Manet beat. And it was easily accepted because that was it. Then we had the JQs and the Pietus and the Sugar Tones and, you know, you list them, who also brought a, brought a certain kind of uh, a, a jammer feel to um, what Reggie has started, if I can say that, or Zach Manet or the producers were playing. So um, we, we had, a, now it opened up to a wide, um, you know, variety of artists who jumped on such rhythms. And yes, we saw Dakite Chie, we saw Achiame, we saw all these, all these uh, artists. Then came Hammer, who brought a certain rhythm. And that's why I needed him on this one. Who brought a certain hip hop, uh, funk, if I can say that rhythm. Now, um, I don't know if I was the only person at that time, but I was feeling there was this sort of division between artists that would be on a hammer beat and and even the industry accepting um the fact that after a while i said the fact that oh maybe a hammer beat hasn't got the certain high life elements that we are looking for so or he's he's a bit hip-hop so there was this uh, i could feel a, a bit of a tension between even artists that will be on a jq camp and artists that will be on a hammer camp again like i said uh correct me if i'm wrong then with these divisions internally we started feeling external uh conversations like there was the breadth of afro beats where now producers and presenters on radio stations across uh you know europe were all encouraging the afro beats conversation so it started uh sort of squeezing us into this hole could these internal divisions uh that i speak of could be a possible reason why we couldn't continue um using even that name hip life let me make it simple for you, Jay Foley. You see, the very thing that beautifies hip life is what you are trying to limit into internal disputes. Okay. If Hama is producing his brand of hip life and Nana King was produced, also, also producing his brand of hip life or his version and, and, and Morris Baby Face and Zap Mallet and everybody, this huge spectrum comes together to create the Ghanaian popular music. And the popular music scene is what Reggie Rockstone successfully named hip life. That's it. Hip life, like Hammer was trying so hard to explain, is not anything you go sit in the studio and you play drums in a particular way and say that this is the rule of engagement and therefore I'm creating hip life. Hip life is everything you know fused into our local music. So it can spin off as reggae. It can spin off having a, did, did a we dance know this explanation element. at Dan that Dan time? Have... Did we know Say this again. explanation at that time? Because it makes sense to us now in understanding it, but at that point in time, did we understand when... that? Right. Sorry, you can go on, sorry. When things are birthed, it takes for, for it to be you know, fully defined. I mean, over the years, this is what has happened. And, and this is how we should see it, rather than seeing it as the division or the limitation. Because hip life allows you to produce anything and not be one way about it. So if the youth is warming up to Azonto, it's popular music. If they are warming up to anything JQ, which is Jama based, it's popular music. And our word for popular music in this country became hip life. Because mm -hmm. even Reggie Rockstone, what he brought, 
the beginning, Joe Boy. Mm -hmm. These were James Brown samples. James Brown songs either replayed or sampled or contained interpolation of those, you know, songs from foreign, mm -hmm. which was brought to us. If, if you're looking at anybody that redefined mm -hmm. or looked at the name Hip Life and created music, then it's Achami, because we localized it, because Nananum, they were playing techno. Hmm. If you listen to Exdo and Chicago, it's a sample of just the two of us. Mm -hmm. That song, it was completely foreign. So it started from Achami to localize it hmm. and made it commercial but all of these spectrums all of mm -hmm. these different creations come together under the hip life umbrella and it is defined now to us well cut out that the hip life is variety of creations so that up. comes to be popular music for the Ghanaian youth i'll have to hold you right there our time is uh, uh is up spot on at 10 a.m but i think honestly i think you've given us a lot of insights into into this we have to do some switches oh. um yeah but um thank you so very much honestly this conversation can't thank end uh <laughs> until we we are able to uh which could document this you know properly and have it on there for if anybody wants uh, information about hip life should go and tap into that school of thought but thank you so much Chami Kofi, we really appreciate it uh, and uh, looking forward to one of these days. Join us live in our studio. Thank you so much. I'll more than be, I'll more than, you know, be happy to come there. And thank you to your panelists and everybody. Thank you, Ghana, everybody listening. God bless. God bless. Thank you very much. Well, uh, yes, our time is up. But um, guys, I don't know. So I think he, he said a lot of insightful things in there. Jay. Really insightful things in there, I can say, together Jay. with him and Hammer. That's in. Yeah, real quickly. The ten, it'd be very simple. Yeah. We have failed to tell the story mm -hmm. since 1990, what, four or something? Mm -hmm. How many years down the line, we wait till someone does it and then we come back to correct it? What yes, has we'll who, still who, not who, tell it. Who, who, who's what, responsibility to tell what the story? Has stopped, that's what, what I wanted to say. Uh, what, has stopped, what has stopped our, our, our elders who, from... Who? What has stopped the people what who say they are the pioneers what? from so telling the story? Sorry. I don't understand. But they've told the story. No, no we I haven't. Told the story. Told the story. We are still the, now today. Today no. we are saying Reggie that. Hip, told the story. Wait, today, today, for the first time, I'm yes. saying that hip life was a movement, no. not necessarily a genre. So now, tomorrow, when somebody does a documentary and says hip life was not a genre, let's put a headline out today and you see what the reactions will be. Now, I'm getting the impression, and I, I get everything now clearly, because somebody tagged it. We don't want to tag along with somebody's tag. What we don't want to... It. Yes. We also have so we want to do our own. And you see, that is our problem in this country. Now, Afrobeats, that is not ours. That, they say nobody's having Even a conversation about we it. it. We are fighting it. With but somebody, with somebody oh. who can tell you, <laughs> who can tell you Afro the genesis of Afrobeats. You don't want to preserve your own because somebody uh, tagged it. You are it. forgetting Hibdia. You know, wait. Oh. <laughs> Sonia 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 yes. Mama. We, we are so excited that we are doing Afrobeats. You know what we are convincing ourselves? Oh, Afrobeats is now music of African origin. When mm. you had your thing that you could have tagged with you and said that this is... That's why I kept saying that, oh, if we could have evolution of what journals have become, that's why now we are saying, oh, this is contemporary high life. This is a demo special, Pime Hawaii, whatever they used to say. Now we should be able to also say, oh, this is our face um, of hip life. And I like, I like what you're saying. In fact, one of the, the things I'm, I gather in all this, one, hip life was a movement. Mm. Number two, um, we, we sort of brought it ourselves down mm -hmm. by recreating things because we didn't want to target the one person names, yeah. you know uh, I, I like that so i don't know if you want to touch it on your era i, I uh, think 62. i think what mm -hmm. <laughs> quickly mm -hmm. we I, think, I think what we need yeah. to do is we need to own our content more task all and I, to start calling the hip life again that's never going to happen. But know, right. whenever something beautiful is coming out of Ghana, let's forget the bickering and the fighting and the finger yeah, pointing. Let's push and let's it's push not the going thing. to happen, mm -hmm. my dear. Because we lost Azunto, we lost hip life, we lost all the hip hop and GH trap and, and all that. Mm -hmm. 
Now, now, losing the next Bob Marley feature. Yeah. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I'm we just have, saying. We have Mali nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. We don't we have, have nothing. We have to go. No, we don't like. So, we like, have nothing. Have, What's Jalal do we own? Even the high life stuff. Even the high life stuff. It is borrowed. So right now we don't own anything. You own movements. I'm just. Uh, one of the things I can tell you that we own is uh, the beautiful women of this country. Is that why they will claim it? Uh, and on that, <laughs> on that note, our time is up. We, 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 we want to extend our Happy love to, to uh, our viewers and listeners, yes. and especially to my mom. Yes, our time is up. We have to go now. No, but if he's giving shouts, there's we one that to, we need to do. Not say, just to okay, go. Niger please has say. been posting our content. Not just okay. Back to back. Yes, Nigeria, we see the love. Yeah, we see the love. All right, we share the love. On that note, happy birthday to not just okay as well. Thank you.